Welcome back to the Chem OG. Today is Strategy Monday, and what that means is we are going to take a look at a very quick way to be able to do a chemistry problem. So we're not going to go too deep into the chemistry. We're just going to find out a quick little tip or a quick little strategy in order to be able to solve a question quickly in a kinetically favorable fashion, as a chemist would say. So what we're going to look at today is a reaction called an aldol condensation. And the way that you can spot an aldol condensation reaction potentially is that it involves a carbonyl carbon and an alpha carbon. So let's take a look at what those two look like. So here we got two compounds. Um, if you want to spot a carbonyl carbon, it's the one that's double bonded to an oxygen. And so that's a carbonyl carbon. And that's a carbonyl carbon. Now, the alpha carbon is the carbon that is immediately adjacent to the carbonyl carbon itself. So that's the one that's going to be reacting um, with our carbonyl carbon. So each of those is, in, is a carbonyl carbon. And that carbon right there is an alpha carbon because it is immediately adjacent to the carbonyl carbon we got next door. Now, technically, this is also an alpha carbon, but it doesn't have any hydrogens attached to it. So as you can see, this particular carbon is already making four bonds. So there are no hydrogens available on this carbon, whereas there are two hydrogens available on this carbon. So again, not gonna get too much into chemistry. Let's talk about how these molecules can react without really looking at the mechanism, but just finding a quick way of being able to figure out what our correct product is. So here are three aldol condensation strategies from your Chem OG. The first one is if you have a multiple choice uh, exam that you're taking, then what you can do is you can just simply count carbons. The correct number of carbons on your product is going to be the total number of carbons from both reactants. Simple as that. Uh, another strategy that you can use is to make sure that your molecule that has an alpha carbon on it stays intact. In other words, there are not going to be too many changes happening to that molecule other than there are going to be bonds happening at that alpha carbon, but otherwise your molecule is pretty much intact. Uh, and then the third strategy is that we're going to stack and add. And after we do stack and add, we're going to replace a carbon oxygen double bond with a carbon carbon double bond. So let's take a look at applying those strategies to the two molecules. That we have. So the first one is counting carbons. And so for these particular molecules, let's count up how many carbons we have. So on the left hand side molecule, I have the carbonyl carbon itself, and then there's the phenyl substituent. So that's going to be one carbon plus a phenyl, right? And that phenyl ring is pretty darn stable, I'm not going to be expecting it to react. And so that phenyl is also going to pop up my product. There's no use in counting the six carbons on that phenyl substituent or you know, on that benzene ring, uh, simply because I know that that's going to pop up in the product anyway. So I have one carbon from the molecule that is on the left, that benzaldehyde. And if I take a look at the uh, molecule on the right, that one has three carbons, one here, one here, and one there. So when I add up all my carbons up, I'm going to have four carbons plus a phenyl ring. And that is exactly what I would expect to see in my uh, resulting product. So again, if you have a multiple choice exam that you're taking, uh, that is something that you can look for and not necessarily all of your answer choices are gonna have four carbons and a phenyl. So that's a quick way of being able to eliminate answer choices. The second strategy that I told you about is to make sure that the molecule with the alpha carbon stays intact. So if we take a look at a second look at our molecules here, uh, this was the one with the alpha carbon. So I expect that that molecule is going to be the one that stays intact. And so in my resulting product, I want to make sure that that exact structure stays the same. No changes happen to it. Uh, and again, on multiple choice exam, that'll allow me to eliminate answer choices. All right, and then for our final step, what we're going to do is we're going to take our two molecules and we're going to stack and add. So the two molecules that we had look like this. First thing we're going to do is we're gonna locate our alpha carbon just one more time. And then I'm going to take the other molecule and place it such that the carbonyl carbon on the molecule that doesn't have the alpha carbon is immediately below the alpha carbon itself. And that's because both of those carbons are going to make a double bond together. And so I'm going to eliminate that oxygen and I'm going to have a new carbon carbon double bond in my product. And so what that will look like when I extend the double bond is it's going to look like this. Now, remember, our prediction from that first step was that our product molecule should have four carbons plus a phenyl ring. And that is exactly what we have. We have one, two, three, 
four carbons plus a phenyl substituent. Now the product we have isn't quite perfect. Uh, and the reason for that is because the phenyl ring is on the same side as the aldehyde substituent. We probably want those on opposite sides of the double bond. Um, and we got a little bit of cleaning up to do, but when we do clean up, this is the molecule that we get, all right? But it does give you a quick way of being able to determine the product without actually having to put together the mechanism. So give this strategy a thought on the next time you locate an aldol condensation problem and uh, let me know what you think. And if you struggle in any way or have any problems, please let me know in the comments section. Have a good strategy Monday and don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a wonderful strategy Monday. Don't forget to like and subscribe.